Welcome back to another week of Eye of the Storm, a Guelph Storm podcast with myself, Ryan Drury, the voice of the Guelph Storm on Rogers TV. And very exciting episode yet again, joined by one of the members of the team. And he's quickly become a fan favorite in the Royal City. Mad Max Nemesnikov joins us now on the show. Max, how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. I've been really enjoying these episodes. I usually chuck one on in the morning on my way to the rink. So thanks for having me. Oh, I appreciate you watching them. That's good. I've been having a lot of fun with your teammates. And uh, I know a lot of people, uh, you know, people have been asking me since I started the show, when is Max coming on? When is Max coming on? You've really become a staple and a fan favorite, like I said, to the fans in Guelph. I, I guess just what's that mean to you? Because like you've really endeared yourself to the Storm faithful. Yeah, ever since I got traded, it feels like it almost feels like I've been here before. You know what I mean? So, like, it was so welcoming. The guys loved me right away as I got there, and the fans, like you said, kind of jumped on that train. And I just I've loved it being here ever since. Well, they've certainly loved you and have loved watching you score a lot of goals, and that continues this year. You know, just tell us a little bit about the season so far and how you guys have felt. I mean, just coming off of an incredible weekend for you guys, a three-game sweep, including an unbelievable contest against the Kitchener Rangers uh, in, in what was the first game between the rivals. It felt like it took forever for you guys to play them, but just how are you guys feeling after that weekend and yourself this season so far? It's been a pretty good one. Yeah, for sure. Um, we had a really good start to the season. Um, and then we went on this little road trip to Kingston, Ottawa, and we lost a couple games there. And it was kind of, I don't know, we had we needed a big bounce back. And I think this weekend, we it was a big statement weekend for us. And for sure, we uh, we beat Kitchener and North Bay. Those are two very big games for us. And like I said, I think those were statement games. And we've kind of proved that we can handle those teams. And we came out two wins. And then we finished it off with uh, Sarnia. Now, obviously, that, that's that got to be a little special for you because, of course, your OHL journey began there, a third overall pick, and you got off to a good start in Sarnia. Obviously, what would have been your rookie year was wiped out by that pandemic thing we all had to deal with, but then you had a really good season, and then you get traded to Guelph in a deal that, you know, I think that a lot of people, it's pretty rare that you see a deal kind of work out for both teams. Obviously Sasha goes over Sasha passed the job that is to Sarnia and you come over into Guelph. And I don't know that the team at the time in terms of the fan base knew a lot about you don't see Sarnia a whole lot. And you come in and absolutely hit the ground running. You scored 35 of your 39 goals last year as a member of the Guelph storm. Was it as simple as just a change of scenery really sparked something in you? Because like I said, you just exploded when you put on the Guelph Storm logo. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like you just said, it was a change of scenery for me. Um, I needed a, a little button to press that said restart on it, right? And I kind of asked for a trade and uh, you never know how trades are going to go for you, right? They're either going to go bad or they're going to go very well. And I'm fortunate that uh, when I got traded and things got going for me quickly. When you come over, you know, you jump onto a line that turned into one of, if not the most effective first line down the stretch last year for the storm with Braden Bowman. And of course, at the time, Matt Patra, who's having a lot of success in Boston right now. But, you know, what was it about playing with those two guys that seemed to elevate your game? And in turn, you elevated theirs as well, Max. Yeah, absolutely. Um, playing with Potsy's. Yeah, I don't know, 600 assists last season or something like that. And me and Bonesy just kind of got pucks from him and just put the pucks in the back of the net. That's all we had to do. And I don't know, we kind of – there's nothing very special. I think we just clicked. I know that's all it was. I don't think it's uh, anything we did special in practice or anything like that. It was not even film work or anything. It's just like I said, I think we just kind of clicked. Yeah, it looked like it was just kind of meant to be, and it worked out really well for all three of you and the storm, and it continues this year. You know, you've got an interesting story, Max. You know, obviously, you were born in the United States. You're from Wolverine, Michigan, and uh, I want to dig into that a little bit. But, of course, you have great Russian heritage in your family as well, and I know that's important to you too. So what was it like kind of growing up and kind of getting, you know, a, a melding of the two cultures, if you will? Yeah, um, I was born in Michigan, um, and then I got moved, my family moved back to Russia. Um, that's why I went to kindergarten and first grade. 
Um, that's kind of where I grew up hockey. I remember I used to go to school or I used to go to hockey before uh, school, which was at like five in the morning. That's how they do things there. And then I'd go right to school. Um, that's all I really remember. I don't really remember much, but then I moved to uh, back to Michigan when I was eight. And then I've been there ever since. So that's all I can say. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty interesting experience, man. It's something that, you know, a lot of kids at that age don't get to experience that, especially playing hockey. And, you know, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up, of course, your, your older brother, Vlad, who is uh, continuing his NHL journey. I'm sure that he imparted a lot of wisdom on you as you grew up playing. What was that like? Because it, it's pretty special to have, you know, an older brother just in general to kind of impart wisdom on you, but it's even more special for you on your journey to have a, a brother that's playing in the NHL. Yeah, absolutely. He, uh, he's taught me so many things. I could sit here all day and talk about that, but um, I still look up to him uh, now. He's my favorite player. I, with with our schedule, I try to watch as many games as I can. But um, yeah, growing up, we we go out and stick candle. We still do. We shoot pucks together. We stick candle together. We skate together. And him and myself and my dad, we just uh, just work together. And he teaches me so many things. Well, it's clearly working out. Of course, applying his trade right now with the Winnipeg Jets, which must be nice for you to have him up here in Canada playing. Um, obviously, as well, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention. Of course, uh, you're you have a pretty famous uncle as well, uh, Vyacheslav Kozlov, who, of course, people will remember as one of the Russian five from back in the day, multiple Stanley cups. I mean, I I'm sure that that's been uh, interesting to have him in your life as well, because he, he reached the pinnacle of hockey success. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, he was kind of finishing up his career when I was born, but, uh, I know my brother would hang out with them and go to the rink with them and stuff. But, um, all I could do is, I, all I, well, I'm sorry. All I was doing was just watching his film like uh, a couple of years ago and watching his games. I mean, that's all I could really do, but, uh, I've met him a few times. I know he's coaching in the KHL right now. So I kind of, he says, like, he, he said he watches my games here and then, and, uh, he gives me a little bit of advice here and then, which is nice. Absolutely. It's uh, such a great well to kind of tap for yourself. And um, he, he was such a fun player to watch back in the day. I, I do wonder, you know, uh, what he thinks. And I, I'd love to ask you now what you think and, and what the family thinks of the nickname, of course, that uh, Steve Fitzsimmons and myself at the time dubbed on you. The fans have really taken off with it. The Mad Max moniker. What's your opinion of it? <laughs> I like it. The guy's... Uh... The guys give it to me in the room about it and stuff. Uh, where did that uh, Where did that come from? I know one game out of a sudden I was just called Mad Max. Where did that come from? I, if memory serves, it was it was Steve that that dubbed you Mad Max one day just out of nowhere. It's a movie franchise. I don't yeah. know if you're familiar with the movies, um, and he must have watched one of them, you know, before the game or something, and it just kind of popped out, but. Uh, you know, it's kind of fitting because Mad Max, he's a bit of a badass in the in the films. Oh, yeah. And that's what you are on the ice. So I thought it was a fitting moniker and we just continued to kind of roll with it. But if you like it, we'll keep it going, man. No, it's good. I, I'm taking it as a compliment. I watched the movie. I also played the video game. I know it's a video game called Mad Max. So I've done yes. both. So. Oh, I take Absolutely. it as a compliment. I like it. Good. Like well, it. we'll, we'll keep rolling with it. We, we, we got a petition when, when the playoffs roll around, we got to get some shirts going or something. We got, I get actually some saw Max shirts. Yeah. I saw, um, somebody made a custom Jersey that says uh, Mad Max on the back. So that was pretty cool. I saw that. Yeah. I've seen that floating around the Sleeman center. It's uh it's cool. You know, that the fans have really taken to it and to your game. And, you know, speaking about that, just, uh, you know, you come over from Sarnia, you come to Guelph, the fans in Guelph, pretty special fan base. You know, what's that been like for you to experience, you know, every, every year and, and really every game this year so far, Guelph is third in attendance. I mean, the only two that are ahead are Kitchener and London with way bigger arenas, pretty special place to play junior hockey. eh? Oh, it's very, uh, when I got traded, I actually didn't know that Guelph was so good with fans. I, it was uh, unbelievable. I, uh, every night it's almost sold out. Right. So, and uh, it helps us so much. It gives us a confidence booster. Like when we played Kitchener, it was a sold out crowd and our record speaks for itself. I think at home, we 
I think we're eight and two, if I'm not mistaken, nine and two or something like that at home. So it's definitely, it's amazing. And it helps the boys out a lot when we play at home. It certainly seems that way. And the fans have been very treated to uh, a lot of good hockey so far this year. I want to go back to, you know, growing up and playing, obviously you played a little bit of youth hockey in Russia and then you come back to Michigan. And I know that you played for the honey baked program, which is an extremely high level program in Michigan. It's, it's produced so many great NHL players. What was that experience like? And what do you remember best from those minor hockey days? Yeah, um, I just remember not losing. I think we we would go on like thirty game win streaks and only lose three games uh, a year. And I know uh, we chirp the O fours of, of the team. We chirp each other, and I'd give it to Jake Carabella and Ryan McGuire about uh, us beating them all the time during minor hockey. But that's all I could remember is really uh, not losing. I think we would blow all got like teams ten nothing or. Seven one or games like that. That's all I could really remember. Well, you are a big contributor to that because just staring at your elite prospects page now, when you were on the 15 U team, your last year there playing triple A for honey baked, let me read this stat line out for you. 59 games, 53 goals, 75 helpers, 128 points. What the heck was going on with your game that year, man? Because you just couldn't be slowed down. Yeah, I, I can't take all the credit. I was playing with very good players. Um, I know my lineman was Frank Nazar. Uh, he's currently playing at University of Michigan, first round draft pick. Um, we had so many. With Spencer Sova, who plays for the Erie Otters, he was our defenseman. We had uh, Andrew Oak in that. Um, we, ju- we just had a very stacked team. So I can't really take all the credit for just doing everything myself. I think I was supported by really good coaches um, that helped me a lot. And obviously my dad and my brother chipping in everything. And uh, yeah, that's it. (laughs) Well, it was a pretty fun year and you're having another one for Guelph. And I want to ask you a bit about your game and how your style kind of developed because you're not the biggest guy out there, but I think this is a big reason why the Guelph fans have really kind of attached themselves to you. You play a lot bigger than your frame and you're able to dig in and supply a lot of great offense. You've got a wicked shot. Who were some guys growing up that you watched that you maybe kind of took little bits and pieces from and said, I'd love to kind of add that to my game. Was there anyone in particular you remember watching? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like I kind of said uh, previously, I looked up to my brother a lot. Um, like I said, he's taught me a lot and he keeps teaching me a bunch of things. Um, I used to watch all of his games. So I kind of, the small things he did, I uh, I try to add to my game. But nowadays, uh, whatever, every chance I get, I try to watch Yanni Gord, uh, who plays for the Seattle Kraken. He has a smaller frame. He just plays with a bunch of speed. He could also score. He kind of does everything. He's kind of a little tool of the team. So that's who I kind of look up to nowadays. I like that. I I think that makes a lot of sense. And I I think you could have very similar success someday in the NHL to Yanni Gord with the way you play. You know, growing up, Max, you know, you you play with so many different kids growing up. Some go to higher levels, some don't. You seem to possess a skill that a lot of kids would love to have. and, And that's your shot. And we've seen it on display a lot again this year. When did you kind of start realizing as a young man that, you know, my shot looks a little different than the other kids I'm playing with? Um, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, my dad kind of, he built, he built me like a shooting station downstairs in my basement. And ever since I was little, he would always kind of get, t- get like after I'd come, sc- I would come home from school and I would go straight to the basement and rip pucks for an hour and a half. And then I would go to practice. Um, so ever since I was probably around 11 years old, I was just shooting pucks in the basement. And, um, you know, it's kind of, I don't know, it's 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 kind of nice looking like looking back now that uh, it's kind of slowly paying off. Right. Putting all those hours in the basement, just ripping pucks. And um, I still do. I'm probably going to go home for Christmas <laughs> and shoot a bunch of pucks again. So it's just uh, it's kind of rewarding. I love it. Well, listen, Max, I was shooting pucks in my basement too, and my shot doesn't look like yours. So uh, I I think it's uh, obviously a combination of some God-given ability and, of course, a lot of practice and dedication, which uh, I would say is immediately paying off for you. Uh, That's a pretty special shot you've got. 
Uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, your equipment. Do you have any like funky, you know, superstitions with your equipment? Do you still, you know, hold on to a certain pair of gloves or something? You know, I know guys are sometimes a little superstitious. Is that you at all? Um, hockey gear wise, I'm not that superstitious. Um, uh, same tape job on my blade or on my stick. I use that little candy cane. I don't know if you see that or not, but I use a candy cane on my stick. Um, I usually, you mentioned gloves. I really like new gloves, so I don't keep the same pair of gloves for too long. I love new skates. I, I actually like new gear, so I don't really keep any of the old stuff. Okay, interesting, because I've heard a lot of different stories about, you know, there's certain guys, they'll keep the same pair of skates for seven years, and then there's other guys. I mean, I know Duncan Keith, every single NHL game he played, I think Patrick Marlowe said this too, they would get a brand new out-of-the-box pair of skates and play in them and then never wear them again. I mean, that's uh, that's interesting to me because I had to break my skates in forever, but you're you're a little the opposite. Yeah, it's a little a pair a pair of a pair of skates a game is a little absurd, but uh yeah. <laughs> I'd probably use one for like I don't know, a couple of weeks and then I would like to switch. That'd be nice. But a stick a game would be nice for me though. That's one thing I would love is a stick a game because I don't know, I, my blade and my stick break so quickly. Like I would go three practices and then I have a soft blade and then I have to switch sticks. So that's one thing I would really love a game as a stick that would be super nice well i think someday you'll be able to do that what kind of stick do you like and what kind of curve are you rocking out there uh i have the right now i have the agent that's wrapped in a a proto r um and then i'm using the kucherov curve with a 77 flex Wow. Yeah. It, well, it certainly looks like it. You're getting a lot of whip on those shots. So I, I, I'm not surprised to hear that. What is it about the Kucherov curve? Like, is that a newer thing you're using? Like, did you use something similar when you were younger? Yeah, it's very similar to the P28 curve. Um, it just has a different lie on it, right? So it sits differently on the ice, according to my hands. So the way I play with my hands, that's how the lie switches. So that's why I use a Kucherov because I kind of play up more up on the shaft. So that's kind of why he's a Kucherov. Some hockey science with Max Nemesnikov here. I love it. No, this is interesting <laughs> stuff. Uh, I'm sure, you know, you know, you've watched a couple of these you mentioned, and I I've liked to kind of ask your teammates music tastes. It's a big thing in the room. And I I've got a lot of country. You, the, your room seems to be very country heavy, maybe a little EDM mixed in there. If you're in control of, of the iPod in there, like what are you throwing on? What's on your playlist? um probably some pop you mentioned country i think we play way too much country shout out to channel romeo way too much zach Bryan. that's absurd okay <laughs> way too much um i do like country i'll give it to them but that's like once a week you know what i mean but not every single day but if i was on the ox i'd play some pop probably i like justin bieber i throw some justin bieber out there nice uh, uh who else have i listened some edm it has to be the right time and place, so I can't just – not after, like, a practice or something. But ch just chill vibes music is what I like. Okay, there you go. I, I like this. We're getting a little bit of variation now, uh, and, and I appreciate it. Still waiting for somebody to get on the heavy metal train with me. I don't know if I'm going to find a kindred spirit in your room here. Yeah, that's – I don't know. That's going to be a long time until you find someone. I'm not even sure. I'm trying to think of any of the guys that like that stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If there's, if there's one guy who I imagine might, at least the heavy metal would fit the way he plays, it'd probably be Ryan McGuire, agreed? I could see that guy getting fired up to some Metallica or something. Yeah, when he's buzzing out there, I can see that playing through his head for sure. Speaking yeah. of him and, you know, the, the way he plays, it's really become an identity of your team this year. And when you joined the team last year down the stretch into the playoffs, you guys are a really hard working group, man. And, and I don't know if there's a game I've seen recently that encompassed that more than that comeback win against Kitchener down five, two in the second, your goalie's been pulled and you guys just absolutely put the pedal down and came roaring back. You guys have a really tight room. Uh, your teammates have all said it to me and, and I can tell, you know, when I walk in the rink and see you guys warming up, I can tell that this is a very close knit group, pretty special room. eh? 
Absolutely. Yeah. Kind of what you're saying against Kitchener. I think we we were, I think it was four, two, right. When the period ended the first period or five, two. And uh, yeah, all the guys kind of just sat down in the room and we just mentioned playing for each other and sticking up for each other. And uh, I know we got yelled at and, and all that stuff. And we just sat there and just wanted to play for each other. And uh, we came out with a very nice start and obviously we won the game. So I, like you said, we have a very, very uh tight group but we all joke around every single day nobody takes the jokes too too hard and uh a lot of pranksters and stuff like that so i love the boys for sure yeah well they've they've said similar things about you too so i i can definitely tell it's a very uh family-like atmosphere in there a bunch of brothers uh i want to ask you you know we talked about it on the broadcast that night but that game against kitchener we saw something that i don't think we were necessarily prepared to see and that was big Vilmer Ulrichsen dropping the mitts. And you guys, that's what really seemed to turn the momentum for you guys. What was the reaction on the bench? Because he, he his first career fight, he did pretty darn good. Oh, yeah. The big trees, we call him. Uh, he he can chuck them, man. We, the boys were getting very – I had my adrenaline was rushing. I was shaking. That got me going for sure. He was throwing some bombs, man. So I'll give him credit for sure. That was a very nice fight. Props to him. Yeah, it was really something. You guys put the pedal down. Of course, you end up with the game-winning goal in in that game. Um, I, I want to ask you as well, you know, obviously there's long trips in the OHL. You got to get on the bus every now and again. You got to head up north. You can be on the bus for a while. Are you a big Netflix guy on the iPad? Like, are you watching shows on the bus? And if so, what kind of shows have you been digging into lately? I'm not... Uh... I'm not very really a movie or a show guy. Uh, I usually sit in the back with all the older guys and just mess around. I'm I'm usually joking around or chucking an empty water bottle at someone's head or something, something funny. I I like So you're one pot. of the pranksters, you're saying. Yeah, I like to mess with the boys for sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, I get some karma back though. They get me back too, which is not good sometimes. They go a little little over the board, but uh but yeah, like uh going back to what I was saying, um uh, I'm usually talking to the guys or I usually throw in some AirPods and just listen to chill vibes, music, uh, play on my phone, watch TikTok, stuff like that. There you go. If you were, if you were going to throw a movie on, do you have like a particular favorite maybe that sticks out? Uh, I recently got done with uh blacklisted. I don't know if you've nice. uh, watched that. That was, that's actually my favorite troll. It was very, very good. So, there you go. James Spader. Yeah. Anything, yeah. Yeah, Qual quality good. stuff. Yeah, there you go. That's perfect. I want to ask you uh, as well. You know, I've talked to a couple of your teammates about this. There's there's a bit of debate, but I've been getting a pretty consistent answer. The NHL, the NHL games. I've heard mm -hmm. Braden Bowman from a couple people now. I've heard Bonesy is the best at Shell. Can you confirm? And where would you put yourself in the rankings? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to take that away from Bones. Yeah, I'm going to say Migsy. I don't know. Really? Migsy's beat me a couple of times. And uh, yeah. But if it's any other game, I will beat any of those guys by a landslide because I'm a very big gamer. So like, really, if we, if we play COD, I, no one will have a chance. But uh, NHL, they all got me. So honestly, on the rankings, I'd put myself at like I don't know, seven or something. I'm not. That's not my game. Okay, fair enough. But COD or like, are you are you into FIFA at all? Like, you're you're killing people at that stuff. Uh, not FIFA. I'm more like a first person shooter type guy. So, like you mentioned, okay. COD. Yeah, a game called Rainbow Six Siege. Those are the games I play. Okay, all right. So you're just quick scoping everybody out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's my thing. <laughs> okay, I'll take your word for it. I'm gonna I'm gonna investigate. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get some word back on your COD game. But yeah, I've I've heard <laughs> I've heard Bonesy's about, but I've heard McGuire. I've gotten that answer a couple times too, and I hear Bushy's not bad at it either. I put Bonesy at second, Migsy third. Okay, Charlie third, Bushy. I'm not sure. I've never even seen Bushy play. I, yeah, so I can't give a comment on Bushy, but those are my top okay. three right there. Fair enough. Yeah, that works. That works for me. I want to ask you as well, you know, you know that I've been asking your teammates this too. I kind of like to wrap up the the player interviews with this. Uh, I'd love for you to put yourself in a dream starting lineup. 
you and it, it can be anybody, but we, we need you on the wing, a center, another winger, 2D, and a goaltender. It can be anybody. Guys you play with, doesn't have to be NHL guys necessarily, but if you were to put yourself in a dream starting lineup out there, who's out there on the ice with you, Max? Um, So myself, I'll put on left wing. I'll put my brother at center. Yeah. Um, Slava Kozlov, my uncle on right wing. I like it. My dad on right wing or on right D. And we'll put Vladimir Konstantinov on the left. Wow. Put some toughness to protect. Yep. We have a skill like line at top, so we have we need some toughness to protect us. And we'll chuck in Vasilevsky. So we got the Russian six right there. We'll do that. I like that a lot. Boy, Konstantino, that's a throwback too. And of course, your uncle played with him. He was tough yeah. as nails. I like that. That's a good show. And ba- come on, Vasilevsky yeah. and that. How can you go wrong with that monster back there? And how can you go wrong with Mad Max? When you throw him out there, good things happen, man. It's typically top corner and it's a lot of fun to watch. Max, so much fun to have you on the show. It's even been more fun to watch you and your career really blossom here in the Royal City. And I know the fans feel the same, man. Thanks so much for doing this, eh? Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. Remember, you can watch this show on the YouTube channel. Just search Eye of the Storm, a Guelph Storm podcast. You can find it on all your favorite podcast apps, including Apple and Spotify. You can even find links on the team website. And hey, if you'd like to get some tickets, come down to the Sleeman Center and watch Mad Max and his teammates go on the Guelph Storm website or the ticket office at the Sleeman Center. We'll be back next week with more Eye of the Storm. <laughs>